finally meet you, man. Yeah, I remember you called me, I think, when I was either in Dubai or Toronto. Yeah, you was in Dubai when I called. Yeah, yeah, I was like, man. <laughs> um, so before I start, uh, before we officially start, you know, I always want to thank you for uh, patroning my services. This is a new journey for my business and my team, getting into consulting, you know, just doing videos with Michelle and then being on Eric uh, Coffee's channel turned me into a de facto consultant. Uh-huh. Um, Honestly, I had been on the fence about it for a while just because uh, when I started working with Michelle, you know, she wanted me, she was like, you know, I feel like you can bring a lot of us to the forefront because you're very relatable. Mm -hmm. And I, because I didn't even want to do that first event interview because, you know, like I, I like, I like a private lifestyle, you know? Yeah. You know, like most of us. Yeah. You know, all of us, we want the fortune. I don't, I never care about the fame and I don't want to ever be famous because I like my privacy and my peace. Mm -hmm. But, Working in the defense industry after leaving the military, you know, you, you, it's a lot of us that work as workers, but not as owners or bosses. And if we want to get real wealth and start closing the wealth gap, we need more people. Now, that, don't, that don't mean I'm solely working for, for people with black people, but I am passionate about seeing my own in the business, you know, coming from, you know, South Carolina. Okay. And, um, you know, just, you know, I know how the demographics has been, of, you know, always us at the bottom, you know. So, uh, you know, I just want to thank you uh, before we get started. And then I, I did go over your questions. Uh, let's try to cover those. Um, we may run a little bit over, but like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of very lenient on the time. Okay. Um, before I start, um, I also I also want to get your consent um, to record the session. Oh, that's fine. I will be sending you a copy recording. And then I sometimes now for my advertising, I, I do ask all my clients if I can show some of our like for advertising. I don't show proprietary data of yours but just to bring more customers, you know, because I am trying to stop what I call the Atlanta chicken circuit where I just actually had one young lady who worked with uh, Fox way before she didn't learn anything. And, you know, a lot of people that you see on Insta Instagram, they're charging people all the five, $10,000 and not yeah. teaching. Them. And, um, you know, then just go see when they get their money and telling you, you're not working hard enough, which is yes. Um, you know, I'm actually doing this. That's why I do nights and weekends because I'm actually working on my business in the daytime, you know, just like you guys are. Yeah. Now, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and start recording the session. And then I'm going to, um, if you want, I just wanted to make sure the, the way you sent the questions, you wanted me to go in that order. Um, uh, that was pretty much just a, a dump out of my head. We can go in that order. That's fine. I'll well, tell you what, I tell you what, since that's the case, you ask the questions. So you, in the order you want to go and then we'll answer them. Okay. Okay. So. So whenever you're ready. All right, let me start the recording and then we get started. Okay, James, we live. Let's go ahead and get the session started. So uh, what's your first question that you want to learn about? All right, so um, first question was like finding COTS items to sell on Amazon. Like what is your methodology of doing that? Um, okay. Because I'm, because I guess, and one, I wanted to talk about one, how you're doing and just kind of, you mentioned during our call last time, it's like, you can see like the, you can actually see who's making the purchases on your back end in Amazon. And I'm just yeah. curious, so like, how, how are you seeing that? And what are you seeing? Yeah. So you don't, you don't get, now you get two things. You get commercial customers, like people like that, me and you, you can see their name and then you get business customers. So typically when business customers come, you, uh, that's when you know it's either government or either another business, but majority if it's business, it's usually going to be government because it's small business purchases. Mm -hmm. Because you are aware that the way the Amazon program works, um, got federal buyers, even any, any government agency, they can only procure from small businesses that are registered with their set of sides in Amazon. Okay. Um, so let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to, I'm going to share a screen. I'm just going to share the whole window. And I'm going to log into my Amazon. You see my screen? Yeah. All right, so if you look at my uh, go to my orders, you can pretty much see here when you go in your orders, mm -hmm. see a business customer here. You know, that's going to be a, a, a actual buyer business customer here, and then I can kind of look at different products. That's that's all my open orders. I can go to all orders right here um, in the last week, in the last seven days, and then I can see who's been a business order or who's been a, you know, if it don't say business and it's, it's a customer, you can actually see that person's name if you click on the order details yeah. or information. Um, or you, you had to even show the buyer name right there. But business customer, business customer, business customer. 
They bought six right there. You see? Yeah. You know, they're buying in bulk. Um, so that's that's how that works. Um, that's pretty much self-explanatory. All right. But you don't, will you be able to see if it's a business customer, like which set aside is actually getting you the 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 most traction or anything like that? No, they, they won't, they won't ever break it down like that. Um, that, you know, I would recommend, you know, because yeah, they, they have to filter. They do have to filter um, when they go on the Amazon. So when they go on the Amazon, they will have to filter by the, the set asides. Mm-hmm. Now, if you look at, let's go to one of my products, right? Uh, let me go back. Let me just keep the screen sharing for now. <clears throat> and I'm going to go to my profile. So I'll go to something that I have that I should have the buy box on. Uh, I'm out of stock on these, so I got I'm waiting on I'm waiting on a pallet of 200 right now. But let's see if I got the buy box on this uh, sound bar at the top. Oh, they took a oh, while. I don't know why they have it like that, but I'll just go to my I'll just go to my once I pull up. They got someone else got the buy box. Let me just uh, to the Amazon. I actually got to call them tomorrow because they got some of my products that's in stock and they still got it at zero. I don't know. You're, you're actually selling on Amazon, right? Yeah. Right now I don't have anything listed. Okay. So if you look at my, uh, my page on Amazon, correct? I got, I, I use the same company name. Mm-hmm. Uh, you look at, the, you see where it says quality diversity, federal certifications. Yeah. I got the veteran owned SDVOSB, minority business, disadvantaged business. So everything that you would have in Sam.gov. Yeah. You would want to have here. You understand? Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and pretty much, and then pretty much I got to get more stuff in stock, but, um, you know, stuff sells. So my stuff selling so fast that it's just, you know, if you come to my inventory, uh, FBA inventory, I have a lot of stuff, but it's just, I'm telling you that it, that's why I say it's once you get set. So your Amazon is not set up, I guess I assume. Correct. No. And actually what I'm going to do, cause I have, a, I have my old Amazon account. I'm yep. starting a brand new account to go with the actual, this with the same business name, similar to yours. The same business name that's in Sam, so I can like yes. use those. Yes, and that's what I'm saying. And yeah, and I, I'll be doing that this weekend. So um, that's why I want to talk to you. I'm like, okay, how how are you setting that up? And I, I believe I think I know actually how to set it up and put those different set asides in because I was playing around with it on my old account. But um, I was just trying to get an idea of like, what am I? What else could I be missing, or what are the gotchas, or just you know, just setting that up. Yeah, and um, do you have all your set asides in Sam? And, and then I think you're in, you're in North Carolina, right? Yeah, I'm in North Carolina. You got your um, North Carolina certifications too, like your MBA, your Black Business Enterprise, your DBA. No, I don't have any um, state certifications. All of mine are federal. Okay, why? Why is that? Well, I just I just started this venture like li- literally a few months ago. So yeah, okay, I'm gonna tell you something. I want you to write down this term or or, or save it in a computer. Mm-hmm. I want you to write down the SBDC. That's the. Uh, Sierra, Sierra Bravo Delta Charlie. Okay. So, right. And I want you to type in Google or anything, the North Carolina SBDC. And the reason why I want you to do that, I want you to get into the Apex, your, pay t- your PTAC program. They call it Apex Accelerators now. Mm-hmm. The reason why I want you to do that, James, because I always tell people, you know, I don't, I'm not a predator. You know, I run a business first. So what I mean by that is I don't want you to come in, you end up getting swindled where you're paying people to get your certifications and set aside because all that's free. And I always lead my clients, anybody working with me to the free resources. That's how I did it. So when I started, before I sold, made a dime in business, I went to the South Florida SBDC down here in Miami. Mm-hmm. And I got this nice PTAC, Ms. Murtha, and she got me everything to make sure I got all my certifications, state and federal. I don't have all my Florida ones, um, which the catch was holding me with some of my Florida ones is I'm from South Carolina, so I'm still a technically a resident of South Carolina. Yeah. Which means because I have my primary residence. I do real estate too. My primary resident is in South Carolina with a homestead exemption. So if I were to change my residency to Florida, I would lose my property exemption being 100% disabled veteran. I was about to ask that. I'm like, you got homestead. So yeah, that means you're eight. I, mean, yeah, yeah. I know the veteran side of things. So that means you're 100%. Okay. 100% permanent total. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so um, I want to. So when I do buy a place in Miami, then I'll switch my residency to Florida. Yeah. And I'll, of course, I lose the homestead in South Carolina, but that'll be a rental property then. And then I'll uh, get all my state certifications. Uh, but if you are a resident of North Carolina, you need to go ahead and get that. And you need to get in the SBDC program so they can walk you through it for free. Okay. 
and get at and make sure you got all your federal ones. So you got what, what ones do you have federal? You, you you're going to be a disadvantaged business. Um, are you are you SDB Yep. So I have that one, and so yeah, that's, that's the main one I have is just a service disabled veteran owned business and small business. That's that's the best one. The strongest one in the world is SDB USB. Okay. Yeah, because nobody nobody discriminates against that or despise that certification because anybody can get that. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's and that's one of the ones you earn. You don't just get like like some people get mad and say, "Oh, they just got born with a certification." You know, you know, which you know everybody has their opinion. Right. Now we know the history of this country why we get that because our family, people like me and you, especially if you're from the Carolinas, did free labor for this country for hundred of years. Right. Right. <laughs> and without reparations, and the only group of people that didn't get reparations. So, but I that I digress on that. But um, yeah, get all your certifications. And I would actually, because it's not a, I, I didn't start Amazon first. I started GovCon first. Okay. Um, so I would get all my certifications, everything rest, and then go. And then also, if you can, um, Amazon, I did this. I did the Black Business um, Amazon program. It was free at the time. I don't know if it's still free. But once you get your seller business, your, um, your, your, account, your account sync up with your actual business name, you start registering. Yeah. I would get into that program because they had pretty much perks where you would get free consulting where they would teach you Amazon tips and tricks on how to do things to, you know, kind of boost your sales, mm -hmm. as well as they gave you free, like, uh, gave me $500 grant, uh, gave me another 2000 in free advertising. Oh, nice, nice. So take advantage of it, you know, okay. take advantage of it. But now um, that, yeah, so that, yeah, you clear on that. What's your next question? Um, so, um, so you said you started with GovCom. I was like, what's yes. What's some of the verticals you did in dibs and like I guess your better verticals on dibs versus Amazon? I guess I, not that you just showed me the Amazon, it looks like you're mainly in like tech or hardware kind of stuff. So I do it all in dibs. Um, um, so you know, I started my first thing in dibs was hardware where I sold two boats mm -hmm. because I was aviation in the army, so I sold two aircraft boats. Um, but one thing you're gonna find in dibs is you have a lot of companies, you know, everybody know about war dogs that have been getting their money for a long time and they kept that thing quiet. They was, that, was a, that was a great secret they did. And now that the cat, the bag, because the internet, like I said, the internet kind of leveled the playing field. With that being said, a lot of companies will not work with you no matter what you do. Um, no matter what you're spending, they got their little group. They, it's a good old boy club too in business and I want you to learn that. So what I tell people is start big and then scale down. What I mean by that is commercial off the shelf, big brands, and you want to get distributors that'll give you an account without scrutiny. Um, some of the ones I, I give all my anybody that work with me, I give you some free ones. I give you Granger, mm -hmm. I give you uh, Master Car, Zorro, and then as you as you start winning products within those um, brands, you want to expand out, and you always want to get close as close to the to the approved source as possible. So let me show you something. All right, so I'm going to get off this Amazon screen, right? All right. I'm going to go to uh, Granger. Now, the way you find verticals and dibs, I tell people, it's two ways. I'm going to go to DLA right quick. You, you find the way we bid, we bid off of two ways. We really bid off one way. We bid by the approved cage. You know how you got a cage code? Yeah. Everybody has a cage code. So how I did is I found, so I found Granger first, right? Yep. Now watch what I do. Should already be saved there. So I teach the bid by cage strategy. Now they, I know their main cage is 25795. They got multiple cages. Now I come back to DLA dibs. I drop that in there, right? Mm -hmm. 68 opportunities. Let me just log in and show you something. Just in case, I'll do, I'll do that again. Now, on the strategy, if you if you watch my interview, I you know I tell people the low hanging fruit strategy. I I am a firm believer, right, that the government well one the government wants more vendors because they tie the the more the more vendors the more suppliers the cheaper the prices they want competitive competitive pricing. Um. Now, if you see this one right here, it's an SDV OSB, it's a space heater. It's, they want 381. Okay. The problem with that is 381, you're probably going to have some heavy competition on that, you know? Now, we can take the, now what you do is you take the part number, right? I'm going to show you to see if we can find that part, right? That's the space heater right there. They have two part numbers, right? So I'm going to search both of them. 
to see which one's cheaper on Granger. So I think the first one was cheaper. It's 157. It's on 104. So we're gonna go adjust. Now, what I also do, and you you gonna learn this as a while, it's always more than one supplier. So I always take one of the things, that's why I love the internet. I Google search that part number. Now look at this. I saw Zoro had it. 88.95. Mm. And you're gonna learn when you become a wholesaler and a reseller, you see how you see this ragged ten extension I got? Yep, yep. I'm gonna get another six percent off of that. So you can less. I'm gonna get a six percent check, and I and I use Rakuten all the time. And I get checks all the time from them. So, you know, I now it's eighty eight fifty five, right? Yep. Now here's the thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna learn you something while we're talking. They want three hundred eighty one of these, so you're gonna see the price is probably way less. Look at that eighty dollars. Mm -hmm. And you, think, how are they getting it for eighty when it's eighty eight? Right. The reason why is because in, in, in wholesale business, it's, it's different tiers to pricing. So me, I would not bid this off of what you call catalog, catalog pricing. And you got to learn that just like how you learn Amazon wholesale, right? Yeah. If I need 381 of these, why am I going to pay 88.55 for them, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to contact Zorro or the manufacturer is actually Dayton. But sometimes some people, they, they sell through Zorro only. And I'm going to contact Zorro and say, hey, I want to buy 400 of these. What's the price? What's the best you can do with me? But I, but, but with my clients, I don't want you to start here. Like I told you, since there's so many, it's going to be competitive, right? Right. What we're going to do to build up some past performance, to build up pricing, we're going to look for something that's like not that big. Now you come down here, they only want two of these. Come back here and go to the price. Make sure that's the right thing. Yeah, but some amount. Um, we'll look it up and we'll look it up in uh Zorro as well. 1619, 2532. You all see the price. And Zorro is actually a subsidiary of Granger. Granger owns them. <clears throat> but for some reason they get better pricing on Zorro. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've, I've seen this. I was um I'm on um what's his name? Kiwi. Yeah, oh yeah, you are DLA Guru. Yeah, I'm on his calls. Now guess what? That's why I call it low hanging fruit. So the last time they bought it was in 2022, right? Okay. Yep. 2749. You getting that bad boy for sixteen dollars? Mm, okay. Hey, hey, technically, with this one, since since it's since it's been twenty twenty two, in twenty twenty two they bought they bought uh, I'm on the wrong solicitation right here, six of them. Now they only want two, so I can raise the price, and it's been almost two years. I'm gonna go ahead and put that for thirty dollars. You know. So basically, make a hundred percent almost. Yeah. Yes, I tell people. With low hanging fruit products and, and, and smaller products, so you got to learn how to sell. You know, how, you got to learn how to scale. Now, no, it'd be two catches with this. Now, now, now you got to read the solicitation too, because now, mind you, on this solicitation, you got to pay for shipping because it's five destinations. Yeah. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here. I have I have a uh, I have a FedEx Ground account already, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna make sure first thing I'm gonna do because I'm only buying two is I got to make sure Zorro. With, if they're gonna charge me shipping, I'm gonna pass that to the government, and then I know I gotta ship it. I gotta ship it to the uh, to the DLA, right? Yeah. And so I'm gonna have to uh, pay for shipping to that too. So I'm gonna mark all that in there, and then still mark up the product, you know. But it's a low hanging fruit, and nobody probably gonna bid that because it's just so low. They ain't nobody looking at it because you know a lot of these companies for the bigger opportunities. They have software that, that they can um, scrape the data from Sam, right? Mm -hmm. If anything over like the micro purchase, it's going to go on Sam. And those companies that have software, they're going to see it, like HireGov and all that stuff. Yeah. But they're going to automatically know it's going to paint in the bank, bid it. 
But if you do what I do, what I do, the law and fruit, what that's going to teach you is you're going to get stuff that's not paying in, so it's, it's less competition. And then since you're FDV USB, you can start turning stuff like this into SD or BSB, where they buy this from you like two or three times in a little small quantity. And then they say, hey, you know what? Let's give them an a IFB, which is a no bid contract, which is an inv invitation for bid only for you, mm -hmm. where you can just pitch your price and they like your price for a, a larger quantity. And that's when you go back to Zorro mm -hmm. or Ranger and say, hey, what's the best you can do? We, we, we've been buying this from you, our client, you know, we've been procuring this for your company. What's the best you can do on this for a larger quantity? And now they're going to, now they can talk it because they can see your purchase history with them. So they know you're a paying customer. You're not just some random begging for quotes all day. Gotcha. And buying nothing because that, that turns any business off. Now, another thing I want you to do, this is why I tell people, in COTS, it's all about volume. You want to come down here to brands, right? Yeah. Featured brands. You, we don't care about that. We want all the brands. So you want to, this is what I used to do in the beginning from A to Z, from, from, from hashtag to Z. I take this, I start right here with 3M. Cage code. Get that cage code, yep. Then I'll take that 76381. Come to dibs. Drop that in there, right? Trying to fit your opportunity. Now, another trick I'm going to teach you, James, is I'm not going to just, nah, you know, I look at this nozzle, right? I'll put this and, 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 see if, and see if Zora has it, right? They may not, right? Okay. This, let me see. One, six, five, eight, five. So this could possibly be it right here. Yeah. 3M right here. 1099. Now I'm going to see what it's selling for in DLA. They want a lot of these now, so I wouldn't do that probably in the beginning. Because, but you see, you see how it's been here um, two times, three times total. Yeah. Um. So they started. So they've been trying to buy this since January 2023. You know what that? You know what that's called? It's called an expired open. That means nobody bid it. Uh. That's why I love about. Can you tell because it's go back? So these aren't contracts that no one filled. Before. They have not been filled. These are open. These are called the only one that's a new, a current one is the last one right here. You see why? The dates. So if it wasn't, if, if it never was listed, no, I'm sorry. If this, I guess what I was trying to figure out, like, how do we know that nobody bid it and this is just not. So two things. No, I, let me be, let me correct myself. Nobody won it. Okay. What, what that means, James, is A, nobody bid it, which is a lot of stuff on dibs, or B, Whoever bid it gave such a bad price, the government did not award it. Because dibs is an automated algorithm for most of the um, solicitations. Most of the majority of the dibs solicitations, because these are purchase orders, right? These are most, 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 most purchases on dibs are what you call fall under the micro purchase threshold, meaning less than 10K. So if their government, they have an automated price thing. If, if nothing hits the price in the bid, then nobody gets awarded. Now, now, seeing that they, this is the third time they posted, I would, I would bet that no one's bidding it. Because if I bid it, and I got the bad pricing, right, and I see it still posted, what? And now, if I'm a competent business person or competent business, what am I going to do? I'm going to go back to my supplier and say, "Hey, you got to give me better pricing on this." Yeah. I'm not going to just take the loss and, and, and I don't do that, you know, and walk away. And I see it's still open. So let's go see why nobody won this. The last company that that won it was in 2022 for $4.25. cents. So we know Zorro price is bad for 10.99. Yeah. But but what we could do we can do that. We can Google that part number 3M. You know, you don't want to you know, you you want to sell on Amazon but you don't want to buy it after it's your supply cuz you yeah. see the price. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to uh, work. That's not going to work. And then the last thing I tell people, the, the most important thing I tell people, get as close to the manufacturer as possible. Just go to 3M. Go to 3M. I'm going to drop that part number right there. Because the, when I want to buy that many of it, that's a, that's a large amount. Like, I'm, I'm definitely not going to pay catalog price, you know? Mm -hmm. So I go to 3M. Let me just go back to their website because I don't want the PDF version. 
So do you have like, uh, what do you want to call it? Um, an account directly with 3M? Yeah, I, I got accounts with 3M, but I don't bid a lot of 3M stuff just because, so a lot of my medical clients, they can get it. And then some of my industrial, but they are good people to bid. Like a lot, like a lot of this, they got a lot of stuff out there. Mm-hmm. So like if I was you, I would look for, um, a, I'm going to give you a really good uh, supplier. AGO now. And they do a lot of 3M. I got an account with them. Mm-hmm. Now, they, a lot of times they're not in stock, but they can get they can get 3M at better pricing than Zorro. What you're going to find is Zorro and them are good entry point um, suppliers. But as you grow, as you grow, you're going to get better suppliers, if that makes sense. Yeah. So let's see how much, uh, let's see how much if, if, if AGO now has this product. Yeah, now you see that price right here? Yeah. That's who you want to price? Yep, yeah, 596. Hmm. They're out of stock, but you can you now you see what I'm going at. Now, if I'm a bid 3M, I would bid it through AGO now. And I still use ADO down, but I just haven't really been bidding 3M because I've been focusing on products more higher, higher, higher markups. But but as you starting, why not you? Yeah. Why not you? Now, for something like that, because I think that was like, those were hundreds of items. To, those were thousands. Okay. From a packing standpoint, like, how do you deal with that? So now, good question. If you saw me on Eric Coffee, what I tell you? What I say about my packaging? I told you, I, I partnered with a company. Yeah. And I, so the company that I partner with, I don't, you can use a mill spec packaging company if you're doing like certain items. But like I tell people, Everybody don't ship what I call a blank shipment. You got to think like a business and you got to understand that you're in competition with everybody. When you're shipping your products to these mill spec packaging companies, mind you, they already got companies that's just like you that's been doing business with them longer than them. They got friends and human nature. You start getting a good contract. You start winning a good profit margin and you having your stuff drop shipped there, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what did they see? They get to see your invoices. They get to see your prices. They might call their buddy and say, hey, man, he getting this from these people for this price. Call them, you know, call them and, 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 and try to negotiate with them. You just created competition. Yeah. I wasn't going to do that. So what I did was I said, you know what, let me, I con- since I was doing the Amazon, I said, let me find a company at this warehouse and prep- prepping that all they know is Amazon. They didn't know nothing about government. I reached out to them, said, can you do Amazon for me? And then I told them, once they started doing my Amazon, I said, you know, I do military. That's my favorite. That's my main uh, business posture. If I train you on how to do mill spec, because I know the mill stand twenty three, I understand it. I, I in, in the way I that, in the way I do these zooms with you, as I train them, I just make I just show them me doing it, mm-hmm. and I gave them video lessons, showed them how to put in the codes, how to schedule the shipment, and now they know how to do it, and they get they can do that because some of the stuff, like I said, we get hundreds, you know, thousand units. I can't do that. That's yeah. all we cost. If you're out there doing that packaging, you're not bidding on finding a source of products and making money. Mm-hmm. So I pay them to do that for me. And I just and 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 and, and the government pays them. Because how why does the government pay them? Because I add that in my pricing. Gotcha. That should be that should be part of your pricing. So as it relates to bidding, are you the only one that's bidding, or do you have like a team of folks that's bidding? Or? I got one more other person that's actually bidding in dibs besides me. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to add to that because I right now, so like I tell you, we all have, that's why I like working with y'all at this level because we all have growing pains. And my, one of my growing pains is not having enough people to actually bid. Now, I have a team that sources. So I have a, a, my admin staff that they, they they don't have logins, but they are able to go because anybody can search opportunities on dibs without having to log in. Mm-hmm. And what they do is they set up our bids and they go like do like the, the work. I've trained them on how to read solicitations, how to find the products, and things like that. How to look at they got logged into all of my suppliers' websites to see accurate pricing. And then for like the onesie twosie stuff, like less than 50, 
you know, we may just, you know, we'll just bid it based off what, what we're getting. Because when you start, so when you, what, that's why I tell people to start with COTS and distributors, because with COTS and distributors, you typically get what they call tear pricing. And as you buy more, your, your tears, you raise up to another tear where you kind of get automatic better pricing in your, in your account. Okay. However, even with that, anytime we win an award, I don't just go buy the product. Absolutely not. I reach back out to both of my, because I got multiple suppliers in the same industries as you should too. And I call them back and I say, hey, you know, I'll, you know, I'll shoot the stuff with them, joke around, and then I'll, you know, I, I need to do immediate purchase. Like, what you can do for this? Well, you know, we're listening for that. No, what, you, what can you do for that right now? We're going to send a PO in the next hour if you can do something with me. Yeah. If you can't, and I, you know, I got to go down the street, but, oh, Rich, you're killing me, but no, I'm not. Mm. It, but that's business. It's, it's called yeah. bar. You got to yeah. bar business. So that's how, that's how, that's how we do that. Yeah. And eventually as you grow your staff and your team, you're going to have to, um, if you looked at Vanessa Cantay when I interviewed with two lines, because I learned from that from them, because that, that, that's why I reached out today. Cause I was like, man, I'm I'm winning, but I need to scale, right? Yeah. And I wasn't scaling because I was trying. I was the one going into catalogs, doing all the bids, and that's time consuming. Just just yeah. if you tracking your bids the right way, that's very time consuming. So now what I do is I have a bid sheet, and my and, and each each cage code on my bid sheet, and I track it that way. And I have my my assistants there take each cage, they throw them, they run the cage and dibs. Put all the um, the um, winning the ones that based on the metrics that we teach them that's worth bidding, and then me and my other bidder, we split those up. But I'm going to be hiring more staff this year to do that with more catalogs. So you like you kind of if you look at like if you look at like Walmart or any big box distributor retailer, mm-hmm. you got to kind of look at how they started, and that's why I, I started looking at how how did Walmart start or how did Target start or how did Sam's Club. And see where they started at with like usually they started with one different product or something and how did they get to grocery and clothing and electronics and that's what it was they had they started as they started making more money they started hiring people to, to specialize okay you're going to just handle groceries you're going to just handle electronics you're just going to handle household goods you're going to handle home and garden and so this person you're going to bid all my you know electronics you're going to bid all my industrial products mm-hmm. you're going to bid all my i'm with me i'm going to do all the tech um um, you know, manufacturing stuff, where it's pro- where, where it's the same thing. If you think if you if you know about Amazon private label, that's the same thing with tech dog. It's, that's why I love Amazon. Taught me a lot. Am- listen to people on Amazon. I'm like, wait a minute, tech dogs, uh, private label, the same thing. It sounds a lot like tech dogs. Yeah, you know. So, so that's what I was going to ask you next. Then, okay, have you have you private labeled or got a bunch of tech docs? Actually, you know, made just yet, or are you still in the process? Not yet, not yet. So I've, I've worked. I'm working with two OEMs right now that that I've done tech doc stuff with. Um, but I'm going to be growing that this year, and I'm that's that's going to be me. I'm going to be in charge of that. That's why I'm building up my COTS team because mm-hmm. COTS is easy. Tech dogs ain't the tech dogs is more you stringent. You got to know how to talk to manufacturers. You got to know how to find the right manufacturers because you don't want to wake up your competition. Right. And then you got to you know QMS and all that, and that's what me. So me and I got one other person that I'm trying to bring on right now. We work together in aviation. And so I know he knows all about QMS, ISO, things like that. So if, if we can negotiate something, he can come on. Then me and him are both handle tech. That's where we're going to be going out there. Well, I have I have a team. So you, you got to get used to Eventually, you're going to have to build. I tell people in your business. That's why I tell you to start with the low-hanging fruit, get some experience, get some past performance, make a little bit of money, and then expand. So now I'm, I got a marketing team. So I have a team that I say, hey, Draft up these emails, cater to manufacturers for leads, and we have a we have a script that we use to, to speak to them. And then the ones that kind of respond, then I'm gonna get on the phone with them and I actually do a one-on-one and engage them and tell them why pro- pro- provide my value proposition of why they should work with me, why they should let my organization sell their products to the government. But I don't say to the government to be able to sell their products. But it's but I don't come at them from a position of a beggar of which. Hey, can you provide me a quote? Can you just make one or two and three? No. I interview them. I first of all, I research the company, I research the industry. I research if there is any potential to commercialize their products. And if there is, then I reach out to them and 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 then I offer my value proposition of what you know, because all they want to do, most manufacturers, they just want to make the product. You know, so one of my one of my key metrics, can you make it? Can you make multiples? Um, do you have a good QMS? Are you set up for inspection uh, for your material, first article? 
which they should be if they're manufactured. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, your job is done. Now, what am I going to do for you? I'm going to get your product in front of other customers. I'm going to 10x your sales. I'm going to. I'm not going to have you strapped for cash as a Mr. Manufacturer. I know you got to pay for material costs. You got to run that facility. You got to pay your employees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer you at least no less than 50 percent upfront. Anything, any project we work on together. So that way, and then I'm going to do the packaging and everything. All you're going to do is handle the inspection of the supplies. And once that is, you're going to send that to me in my packaging house. We're going to package that up. We're going we're gonna to pay you up top, 50% front. Once we get it, once we get accepted from our customer, we're going to give you another 50% on the, on the bracket. We know we're going to get out in 30 days anyway. Right. But that's why I tell you, because everybody comes to me, a lot of people come to me, I don't do tech docs. You had the money for tech docs. Or are you starting from the ground up? Or, or now, if you already got a business, and you already rolling in it, all by all means, start tech. If you do not, that's a very costly, just like Amazon private label. If you, if you really know yeah. private that's not cheap. That's no, more than wholesale. You got to find someone in China or wherever. You got to pay for sample. You got to pay um, MOQ. You got to pay for shipping. You got to pay. You may have to pay customs on both end tariffs. Yep, yep. You got to advertise that product. Try to get a brand recognition. Same thing. With, you don't have to do that much with tech, though. Because tech, though, you should be, you, 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 for devs, it's going to be domestic. Now, you can't use foreign entities, too, for Sam. But I would always recommend starting within your country where you got the protections. You, know, you send some money over to China or India and they run off on you, the U.S. is not going to help. Yeah, that's not. Yep. So, so, yeah. so uh, going back to what you said a second ago, for your team, is your team domestic as well? I got domestic and international. Okay, because um, I know when I was doing, I was doing a whole bunch of stuff and I had a lot of guys in the Philippines that were doing like research and stuff for me. So if you, and then you, you said something a second ago that kind of clicked with me because obviously, you know, overseas, they can't log into divs, but the, they can use. but the way that you mentioned before, they're logging into your local or your U.S. domestic manufacturers or distributors. So they can log, so they can do two lists. They can, they can, they can, so when I, when I'm sourcing, you know how I showed you the source by cage on divs, right? Yeah. So I give them the cage. They have, they have every, every cage code. Anybody can go on there. You can go in there right now without logging in and go to RFQ and search by cage. That cage that you hit, if it's some, if anything in there, it's gonna ping it. They they can they can see that they can get all the detail. Let me show you something. Let me close some tabs up. So let me show you the process. That's what you're gonna do too. That's how you'll scale your business. All right. And I actually so, use higher gov, by the way. So I am I, I, I use higher gov as well. I, okay. I just started using higher gov, and that's that's some good. I think I, I'm not, I like that. I like that one. I, I'm on my free trial. It's crazy. Now it's not think I, I'm doing good. I haven't. I just started using high gov, and I didn't realize dude, it was the truth. Dude, and, yeah, uh, like what you just showed me with the whole cage. Like you set up reports. Like I got reports inside of higher gov that are yep. just cage code specific as well. And then I have them set up that are um, uh, what was like FSC code specific and things like that. So I yeah. can see. So I, so when you showed me that, I'm like, okay, yeah, I can do that on the higher gov side. You can do it on the higher gov side. So check this out. Let me go back and share a screen with you again. So this is this is um this is something that made simple because I tell people don't don't get caught up in buying all this paid software. Quad is kept. We we ain't paying for, we, we don't pay for any software. We do everything free. Mm -hmm. And then we, we have uh admins that do the um the, the heavy lifting. So you see right here where I have a this is my template for the course DLA mastery that we're making that we're gonna be finished within the, before the end of this month. This is the sample that's going to come with it. It's a supplier. So this is a template page. So it's self-explanatory. You see the bottom, I got McMaster car. Yep. Loro. And then I got uh, Granger. And then one of the ones I used to use a digi key because I do a lot of electronic stuff, right? Yeah. Now this one is completed. So what I would have my um, team do, my my foreign team, because this is a much cheaper to pay somebody $3, 3 to $4 an hour mm -hmm. to someone 10, 12. So they would take this cage code. They would go to dibs, RFQ, like I showed you. Prove cage, right? Drop that in there. Now, once they do that, let's try it. Sometimes you get an error, just do it twice. Now, and I and I try, even when I made the video, I made a video for this. Do this twice. If you get an error, now you got seven opportunities, right? Then I make them search by newest. That way, they, that way, and it, and it's up to them to track where they end off at, right? But they, so I said, I said, you track the date that you started on. So you know you started at 12, 11. So if you go back into that cage, you know anything newer than 12, 11, you better be looking at. Now, what I would do then is I would have them 
uh, I would have I would show them how to open the solicitation, and then I had them read the solicitation. Pretty much, um, I don't know if you verse how verse you are reading solicitation, but yeah, you know, main thing delivery. This is um, I'm gonna show you what I mean. I'm gonna, matter of fact, I just show you this before I go out on a tangent with it. But you know, same thing, self-explanatory. They would search DigiKey, which comes up first for this. You see? And then they would also just Google search to see if anybody else got it cheaper. They didn't want to print it, man. Just Google search it. And was it relatively easy to get with um, like DigiKey and oh yeah. I that's why I, I always give my clients manufacturers that you don't have to. You don't even have to call them. You can create an account online and start shopping. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. But you see how Mouser actually has it for cheaper at two ninety seven, right? Mm -hmm. So we actually bid this off of Mouser and not DigiKey. Now, what they would do too is once they come back, now this this is just my course one, so you're not going to see my, I don't I don't share my, one thing I would say, I don't share my suppliers. That's one thing I will not give because yeah. anybody got to do their work. I'm not going to just give you, give my business away. Yeah, work too yeah. hard. But, I'll give you I'll give you the common ones where everybody started where it's still plenty of money, and then this is this is how they do it. So, if you see when they find a hit, and I got this Granger for the, for for um at explanatory, this is the this is the metrics they get they get all this other divs and off the city station the proof cage the part number the NSN description which is nomenclature the quantity I had them drop the link to the solicitation. So when I review it, me or my other bidder, the customer the fob delivery. And then they give me the historical right here, so that we we know we're gonna bid or no bid it is what they you know last sold quantity, the last sold price, the date of the award, the previous cage, right? And then when this is what we come in and fill out, they do this part too. We come in, I fill out the quote date. They, they pick the vendor where they found it at, the winning vendor, yeah, the vendor price, and then I pick the deal bid price and then the employee ID. That's my ID. Uh, so when I bid it, so, so when you bid a staff. Uh, most people question to me today say, well, when I get a staff, how do I pay them? Well, if you got people that's bidding, you want to pay them as a sales job would pay anybody at this sales commission where you, you know, maybe pay them like a minimum wage uh, base salary because you got to pay them something for their work. But then to send them to get them to work hard is the more bids they put in and the more stuff they bring back that win, then you get them, you know, what we know, what we do is we give a 10% commission off, the, off of the net profit. Gotcha. You know, off of the net profit. So, Minus the cost of the material, minus the shipping and um, uh, packaging, whatever's left over by that, they get ten percent of the, each sale, and we just I have my accountant to tally each uh, up at the end of the month. And that's how that's that's, you know, that's that's how you would do sales. But then this is this is and, and, and what you're looking at this is simple, but for dev, this is mainly all you need right here. You know, you don't got to go buy all this. You know, I know KVN and all them got that that bit software in it. You can do that, mm -hmm. but I they are like, man, I don't even use that stuff. And then you see the template page is so when you want to add another cage, right? I can just duplicate the template page and then I can just put the other cage. I can just rename it to the other cage, say one, two, three, four, five, you know? Yeah. And then then they'll they would start, you know, if you go back to you know, they they that's how they do ours. They just go down the list. And we just and they just and every day they kind of I make them give me a Google sheet. I, I the, the Google sheet as well, a Google Doc with, with each one where I can just hyperlink it. Bid it all, and then I'll write it, complete it, and my other bidder does the same thing. That's how we CRM it. Mm. And everything else we win, when we win, we, we make another awarded sheet with the wins, and then we kind of put a calendar link too, where you can just, you know, you can um, add the date of the win and when the date of delivery, with the date of delivery due date for that product. So when you're bidding, um, how, long, how, how soon do you find out whether or not you actually won it or not? That depends. It's no, it's no, um, it's no set time for that. It depends on the material. So a lot of times, depending on how fast they want it. Um, if you are the loser for most stuff, you will get what they call an unsuccessful offer. Mm -hmm. If you are the winner, you get an email that says, uh, "We just won one yesterday." So, if you go to your email, you got uh, this is how they're gonna be A W D M M L B. Anytime you see that, that's awards. You see, so that's gonna be your awards right there. Interesting. Yep. Okay. What are the questions I had? Um, I mentioned I asked something about like the surplus stock and reselling it back to the government. Do you do that? I remember um, 
I haven't done any new surplus yet. I, I um, Now, with the new surplus, you know, if you find new surplus, and even some of the surplus, you, you, you know, I'm sure there's probably a lot of military surplus shops up there. Yeah. If you find some new surplus, you want to go there and say you find some of the new surplus that DLA wants to buy, you know, you find some material. I, I actually find some new surplus material from a shop. The one thing you got to make sure, there's a lot of people don't tell you this, you can only sell it back to the same agency. So if, if it's new surplus, it has to be DLA, stuff that DLA owned. Say like NASA owned it or like the Department of the Navy. DLA can't buy that. And a lot of times with new surplus, what you're going to have to give them is the, um, if they don't have the paperwork, a lot of times they ain't going to have the paperwork for the contract, the original contract paperwork. The only thing that they're going to have that show you that it's new surplus is the actual label that go on the product. So funny because I'm about to, after we get off, I got to make the last video for my course, which is, Going to be me doing a packaging live packaging. Yeah. Based on 2073. Now you see this. This is this is a this is a new surplus label. This is just a regular label that this is the item label. Now on a new surplus, if someone got new surplus, they they should have the original item label, and it would say like, you see, um, you probably can't see it, but with my fingers, let me try to. You'll see that. You see what it says S Sierra Papa Echo. Yeah. That's the contract number. So they would want to see the contract number for that new surplus material on the labels. So when you sell a new surplus, you're going to have to get in good. This, this is the catch with new surplus. Some people, you make the best margins because they really need it back and they ain't no other stock, right? But some of the some of the sur star, surplus guys that hold that stuff, you say, okay, can you send me pictures of the label? They're like, I'm not doing all that. If you want it, you got to buy it. Uh, so you got to be in good. And I, because I had one person that they had stuff I wanted, but I was like, I'm not doing that. Because what, what if that, what if, I was like, if you can't show me the labels, I said, just send me one picture of one label and let me see the contract number. And if all of them that same contract, if if because then I would have that would if I would have if, if I would have known it was DLA, I would have bought it because I would have won it and made a great margin the way I was gonna mark it up. Mm -hmm. But they're playing games, so I didn't. I, I was like, you know what, screw it. But if you want to get into new surplus, you know, I would try to try to find local surplus stock, or because that you're gonna need that. You know, okay. you gotta be careful with that new surplus because they 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 ask a lot of questions and they want the answers. Well, I ain't gonna worry about that right now. I was just curious because I saw it on the on the call the other day when I, the other guy was talking about it. Good day. Okay. Um, I'm trying to figure out. Let's see. I mean, I'm actually about the business negotiating good prices. Um, what kind of profit margins are you getting on average on the dip side versus the Amazon side? So it depends. Like I, like I even said in that, I don't have so. I tell everybody, you know, industry standard, usually, if you look at industry, and that's why I tell you, you got to learn your industries. Mm -hmm. So industry standard a lot of time, and products going to be 12 to 20%, right? Okay. Now, I've gotten profit margins over 100%. I've gotten profit margins only 7%. So let me show you something. So let me go back to, um, I'm going to go back to one of the range of ones that I, that I bid it on. And that's why I tell you this, the actually the, the cheaper products, you actually get bigger margins. So that's why you want to get them for cheap. And then when they buy them in bulk, you get you can see really big margins. Okay. So I log into dibs. One of the ones that I bid for Granger, I'm just gonna just pull that up. This one right here, right? It's one. This is this one. I bid this at twenty-one dollars, right? Okay. I'm getting it for fourteen eighty-nine plus six percent off. So let's do six percent. Uh, um, I forget yeah. about the. Uh... Yep. So if I win this contract, and it's only one unit, but I'm just gonna tell you. So let's do fourteen eighty-nine times point zero six. I'm getting eighty-nine cent off it, so I'm getting it for fourteen dollars. And if I win it, I got for twenty one dollars. So that means I made, I sold it for twenty one and bought a fortune. I made seven dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So fifty percent. It was like fifty percent profit margin. You know, so you, 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 you see, it, it it all depends. What I do is I tell people, you know, I may tell my team, okay, start off at a at a twelve percent to fifteen percent. You guys tell them start at fifteen percent because you do anywhere between ten and twenty percent profit. Mm -hmm. Start at fifteen percent markup. If you are still, if you are still 
way off and way below the last winner, then we're gonna we're gonna throw some fluff on that. So say say I'm getting it for, for ten dollars. The last person sold it for twenty one fifty four. You know, I mark it up fifteen percent. That's what eleven fifty or something like that. Twelve dollars. I'm not bidding that at that and leaving all that money on the table because usually the last person, if they wanted that twenty one fifty four, they could probably bid it again twenty one fifty four. Come down, I'm gonna come twenty one dollars. That's why. That's why it's better to go with the lower hanging fruit products, the onesies, twosies, and that way you can kind of get that contract off. So they can start sole sourcing that stuff to you for bigger margins. When you go after competitor stuff, that's a lot of units and a lot of people looking at. The margins are gonna get thinner. The more comp- the more competition, the thinner the margins. So uh, okay, that makes sense. There. Yeah. Yes. All right. So so you answered that one. That one. That one. Seventh Amazon set. Longevity of the business. I'm not manufacturing just yet. Uh, here's one. Uh, what are some questions that you wish people would ask but never do? Oh, that was, that was funny you asked me that because I was like, uh, well, one thing people never ask in the beginning is what the, the main one I wish people ask is what to do when I win. Mm-hmm. Everybody always, Rich, I just want to win a contract. I just want to make money. We all do. So and I always ask the question, okay, if they give you a contract, what are you going to do with it? You know, are you ready for what you think you are ready for? I, I've got students that, you know, they're calling me going crazy because they want a contract. And then they, the person they're buying from saying, hey, um, we can't deliver for like another three weeks. You know, we got a supply chain issue. And now they're oh, they freaking out, losing their mind. So what you going to do? Oh, I don't know. Why you don't know? You 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 wanted this. And then I got to tell them, well, you need to go. First thing you're going to do is you're going to contact, you're going to let, you're going to get some. I hope that that person told you that in an email. You're going to, Say that email as a PDF. You can go to dip. You can put a par in and do a delivery date extension request due to the supplier changing the date, which the government knows happens all the time. Okay. But, you know, that's, I wish people would be more versed of what to do when they win because that's where the real work starts at, you know? Okay. And then how to be more resourceful. A lot of people don't, because I tell people, you know, I've, you know, if I've had people, like, I'm going to let you know, James, you know, not to try to make you feel special or play you. I don't work with everybody. You know, typically, you know, me and you was kind of fast. You know, we talked before, but typically when I talk to a person, I get a value of their character. I say, hey, we can be a good fit. You know, I've had people call me and say, hey, man, you know, I'm looking to get rich quick. Um, I don't really like to read. I don't like to do, I want passive. I can't even help you. And I recommend you don't contact nobody else that will cheat you. Because if they tell you it's passive, I'm contracting, you know, or, or I want to do the middleman strategy and, you know, just, uh, you know, and I'm like, you just so special. You know, your mother loved you too much. I tell people sometimes, they say, what do you mean by that, Rich? Because you, you were raised wrong and you were raised spoiled. Because if you think this world came a damn about you, they don't. Why would I go do work for your company who know nothing about this business, know nothing about the industry, and do the work, and then you get paid from it, and you sit back and just collect the check? You know, and it's funny, people are actually selling that on the internet. Our people, they are our own people. Yeah, when they yeah. know like that. They know you don't work like that. And the government despises that. Because if I if, 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 if you the middleman, I know I'm paying too much and you ain't doing the work. You know? Mm-hmm. So I wish people would ask more realistic questions and kind of know what they're getting into when before they come to me. And that's why, you know, I, I try, I weed that out, you know, because I'm like, hey, if, you know, if they, if they, if they, I'm like, you know, you need to kind of learn a little bit a foundation. You might want to go to the PTAC program and get a realistic idea on the government and then come back to me. Because I tell people, you're not gonna get rich quick because here, people don't realize, a lot of people think, because you listen, you watch War Dogs, you watch other stuff, you see all these big contracts, you know, Lockheed and all that, and Boeing. But the government expects the best price over everybody. So if the general population is paying $1,000 for the phone, the government wants it for like 800, you know? They don't, they expect that discount. We're the government. We don't expect, people, people, a lot of people think it's backwards. If I'm selling for a thousand at, at, at the mall, I can sell it to fifteen hundred in the government. Uh, no, you can't. Those days are over with. Mm. War dogs ruined that. So after what, what people don't tell you, what they don't tell you about war dogs. After war dog, the government went and hired hundreds of thousands of consultants to price check every different industry. They know the prices. You understand? So, yeah. So they they it's okay. But they yeah they know they know the prices. 
Okay. Um, have a, give me a second. Huh? Um, do, 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 do. My wife, the wife done threw me off my, my game here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Um, anything? You outsource. Da, 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 da. Um, how many students you have right now? I mean, this is just an off the. I, I I don't I don't share student um, privilege, but I have a few students. I, I have more than I than I thought I would have, being that I'm not actually actively advertising. So I'm actually kind of afraid to start advertising because I would just tell you like this: in the last three days, you're the fifth person I work with. Oh wow! And I already got one person that's a repeat customer, and that and she started with Fox Wade. She started yeah. with what? She started with Fo Fox Wade. I don't know if you know who Fox Wade is. Mm -hmm. He's on Instagram. One of the guys that's you know just on Instagram. You, you, I don't know if you know, like so Fox Wade. You have Kizzy Parks. Now I actually mm -hmm. I I've, I've talked with Kizzy Parks. Kizzy Parks good people. Um, Sheena Preneur. I like Sheena Preneur. You know everybody know Eric Carr. Yeah, Car yeah me, and she, me and Sheena chopped up a few times. Um, Hamza Sabri, Global Connects. I don't, you know him. Um, you know what is what is her name? Uh, Fair Bid Exchange. Uh, Michelle. Yeah, Brown. Oh, that's my people. Okay. Yeah. 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 You started with her. So yeah. he is doing, I guess, medical garments or whatever, because she's always talking about her medic manufacturing. Yeah, she, she manufactures medical products. Yep. That's why she hasn't, if you notice, she hasn't now we still have a mastermind that we meet every we meet every week. Mm -hmm. And um she's one of the reasons why I started I told her I'm gonna get a consultant because she don't have as much time as, anymore. But I told her if the, if if this if 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 DLA mastery my my blow up, I want to partner with her and we want to kind of build like a you know, kind of like a dream team where it's like where we where we kind of sway our people away from the Atlanta guru, you know, I don't know if in 2020 all these gurus popped up on the internet, right? Yeah, they did. And that's why if you notice with Damon, that's the main reason why he shows his case code. And that's why I get my business name. I don't want y'all to think that I'm not doing this too. Yeah, there's there's a few that I found. Um, and I can't remember their names, but actually I looked, I I did some reverse engineering on them and I found this stuff and I'm like, wait a minute, they're not even doing anything. No, they're not. They talk, but they talk a big noise. I mean, they talk yeah. a big talk, and I'm like, but no, they're not. Yeah, DLA Guru, he's doing like he's he's done like ten. Oh yeah, years. I see his stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah but you know, so I respect him. Uh -huh. Keep him. I respect Michelle. Michelle, I know her cage, and I know her manufacturing company. And when this thing, when this, she's gonna be a triple digit million company. Um, because she's just because the thing about it is, we don't have enough domestic manufacturers anymore. So if anybody, a lot of people don't know this. If you know, if you're in a mastermind, the government, so. Elon Musk, I'm not a fan of her. Michelle isn't either. People think he got his money from Tesla. No. He got most of his money from what you call the SBIR, Small Business Innovative Researchers Grants. So if you if you kind of come up with a good enough idea domestically, mm -hmm. the government will give you all, they'll pump all this money into it for grants. And then states will pump money into it for you to create jobs in the states. And then they have, and whatever you come up with, if it's something good, probably they'll buy it back from you and you become all this, you become a billionaire instantly. Uh. So he was subsidized by the government, but now if you hear him talk now, he, he's anti-government subsidized. He want a smaller government. And people like that, they just don't want people to benefit what they benefited off of. Mm -hmm. Especially in a lot of time, I believe they don't want us. Because exactly. you know? now it end that we showing up and they don't like that. Why do you think the affirmative action and take away the 8A? You know, for, for years they had these programs in. Why were they there for a year? We didn't know how to get them. And now that we we waking up to them, I'm like all of a sudden, we want. Well, we gotta get rid of that. That ain't fair. We that, that's 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 unconstitutional. You know. Yeah. So anytime we start getting money, mm -hmm. they, they want to change the rules. Let's see. Um, I mentioned this is number two. I think you you kind of touched on this a second ago. The like the IDIQs and the IDVs. Like, are you getting those? And have they been? Well, I, don't know. I, got, I got like three IDIQs. Um, and I, I, I IDV, I, um, I, I'm more familiar with IDIQ and IFB. So IDIQ in dibs, it'll show you if it's an IDIQ in the solicitation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something. I don't really like IDIQ. You know why? And that's why, that's why I tell people to work with me because I almost lost money on IDIQ. A manufacturer saved me. Okay. Because I was going to bid it wrong. So in the IDIQ, they'll tell you, this can be an IDIQ for up to $250,000 or how many years, whichever one they meet first. We, we expect to buy this many, but then we got to, so we expect to buy 5,000, but we got to, but the, but we, but the minimum, the minimum we can buy is 10, right? 
Yeah. Some way low number. Now, if you're a rookie like I was, you go bid it, you go get to the manufacturer and get a quote for 5000 And then you bid it at that price. And but they only buy 10 of them. Now you got to pay the, t- the price for 10, which is a big difference. Now you done lost all that money. Yeah. The manufacturer saved me, it was a sister. She said, Look, she said, You betting on that idea? I kill the STBUSB for us. I said, yes. She said, You betting it wrong. She said, Let me tell you something. We got IDIQs that never even started. That's another catch. If you get if you get awarded a blanket purchase order for 250k IDIQ, the government don't have to buy nothing. You got a year. If they don't buy nothing in a year, they they just the deal just it never started. Mm-hmm. It's a non-binding agreement. If they do buy something in a year, then it's binding. And then here's the thing: you gotta try to hope you can hold that pricing for that whole time frame, or buy some up front. So for a small business that that strap for cash, that's not really good because they kind of put you in a disadvantaged position. You know, mm. you don't know how much they're gonna buy. What I do now, and I teach my students is even if there's an IDIQ. So with IDIQ, they they really want better pricing. So you bid that what they call and in dip you can bid what they call price breaks, where you can bid. Okay, if you buy from you, you tell the manufacturer, hey, what are your price breaks? They'll give it to you, and then you mark it up. You bid each price break with a markup. And then you go to that contract officer and say, hey, I see that the maximum purchase is this. And you give them the best deal on that. If you can purchase that all at one time, I can give you a discount of this and right now. Take it or leave it. Mm-hmm. And that way, if they take it, now you got that maximum amount. You may not get 250 but you got all of that. You sold all of that. You give it to them one time, buy. Boom, bam, boom. You get paid and everybody happy. And then, what, like my, my IDIQs. I got one for bolts. I got some, I got two for bolts, and then I got one for uh, um, some other uh, processors. And you know, random times they just throw purchase orders. I can't, you know, now with my bolts, I bought all the bolts up front because I knew they were going to buy this many bolts. Okay. And I got such a deal on the bolts that I was like, it's, it's, you know, I can't pass it up. But it's, you know, I got to sit on inventory. And me, I, the way I run my business, I don't like inventory. So my inventory is at Amazon being sold, or for the government, it's what I call just in time. I'm going to find enough that, you know, I may buy a little bit more if I can get better pricing. And I know, and I and I forecast that they're going to buy this multiple times. I may just go ahead and buy the forecast amount and just sit on that stock. But for the most part, I just want to buy what I can win. What, what they, what they, what they, Because I don't want to keep inventory. That's why me as a small business, that's one of my innovations. I don't want to have a warehouse. And that's why I was, I'm able to, because the only way you're going to be able to compete with bigger companies and get better prices is you can't have as much overhead as them. Yeah. So if I got a whole inventory, if I got a higher people uh, hire staff and wealth that's overhead i don't do that my i got my company that i sell my packaging to that i work with as partners just in time packaging they they get paid for each job and then i got amazon fba that holds my inventory free and do all my shipping and logistics i don't gotta you know, have a staff and all that so my staff is only at remote work you're bidding or you're sourcing or you're doing back office stuff like accounting record keeping data entry yeah which is innovative Okay, I like that. Yep. All right. So um, I'm gonna switch back over to Amazon for a side for a second. So on the Amazon side of things, um, trying to figure out what did I want to ask. You're running cots on Amazon. Um, there are you are you buying like stuff in bulk? Absolutely. You got it. That's the only you wholesale. You, you're not gonna get good price if you're not buying in bulk. Okay. But. The reason now in the beginning I said I thought I, I said I didn't start with Amazon, I started with the government contracting. Mm-hmm. So I would what I would do is I would find products that the government wanted on devs, and then I started cross-referencing those products in Amazon to see if there was a commercial side for those products. Okay. Like you see, you can see the 3M stuff. You can see, you know, if I did Dale products, you see you know, I cross-referenced Dale products in there, and then I got my distributor and I have a, a federal account with Dale too. And I said, okay, let me see what I can get for because some of the stuff Amazon's you, you're gonna have it cheaper than what you can get from your from the manufacturer, you know, or your distributor, and you just pass on that product. But now it is a way to beat them. You would just have to do uh um seller fulfilled so that you don't gotta pay um Amazon's uh, fees. Yeah, um, referral fee. But um, if you don't want to do that, then you know you but you can find other products and then I do storefront stocking. So what I do is I find some products that you don't know you don't know what storefront stocking is? Oh, oh. Let me show you. Store, okay, yeah, show me. Show. Me. 
So I'm going to go to my Tele Central, right? right? So I go to one of my products that I sell. Now, I know I'm out of stock right now, but I'll go look at all the sellers, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I look at all the sellers that got that's selling new. And I see these companies right here, new tech and tech buff, right? Yep. Somebody selling a bad boy for... Um, Now I go to their page. I go to their products. Okay, yeah, I do that, and then I, I then I sort by best selling. Yep, and then I sort that by best selling, mm-hmm. and then I can just uh, I can just uh, you know, I can just go see, and then I and I don't look at all the products. Now I look at the brands. I look at the brands, right? Mm-hmm. And then I go to my sub, my distributor and see if my distributor had that brand, and then I cross reference those projects, and then I then I would also do um, Jungle Scout, you know. Yeah. Yep. And I just do the free version of Jungle Scout because I don't I don't do ten products a day. So like, like this product right here, right? This is one of my best sellers on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Oh, this to the government too. But now look, I come back up here. Four sixty five in electronics, right? Well, I guess I got to sign up now because they, they were, uh, oh, let me log in. Stop. Let me log in. Hold on. I had a, uh, yeah, I mean, I have to do that later, but I had a Jungle Scout. I guess they might have switched it up. Someone said they were going to change it because I've always just used it for free. Yeah. But you can see that's that's a lot. If it's 465 and, and, uh, and, um, and that in electronics, it's a lot. It's a lot. So yeah, that was gonna bring it up on my side. Yeah. Yeah, bring it up. US. Electronics. Yep. You tell me how much it comes up with. Yeah, uh twenty eight hundred sales per month. Yep. And I know this because I had a hundred I sold out. So I got two hundred more coming in. How fast did you sell out? Less than a month. Dang. Yeah, that, that junk scale is accurate. Okay. I'm actually trying to get my distributor right now to keep me because I had a date. So my distributor gives me what they call pricing, vendor pricing for so many units. And uh, I'm trying to get that deal renewed to keep that price because right now I got the best price. Samsung, I got the best price, better than Walmart, better than Best Buy because I'm an SDVOSB and they saw me moving the product. So they were like, we want to work with you. Oh, man. So I just need to get some stuff like that. Because, yeah, because you're selling it on Amazon yep. and you're paying referral fee and you're still coming out at 10, 12, Yep. Yep. I guess on the low end, because you're saying on Amazon, what are you getting? So uh, that's on the low end. I've, I've, uh, the max I've gotten on for each one of those units is thirty dollars. Right now, I'm, I'm getting about sixteen dollars for each unit. But at the, at the heyday, when I was selling for two two ten, mm-hmm. I was getting like um, thirty, almost thirty dollars a pop. And that's all hands off, pretty much. Yes. All I had to do is, is Amazon easy to my. I just so I buy it from my distributor. They, they they send it in pallets. I send it to my warehouse. Yep. Now my warehouse has to open down, open the pallets up to put the Amazon labels on each one. Yep. Repalletize it, and then Amazon comes picks it up. You know they send an LTL truck to pick it up, and then once it gets to Amazon, that's it. Everything yep. done already. Yeah, I had the same uh, thing when I was selling wholesale. I have yep. an account with uh, Ace Hardware. Yep. So I was killing it, man. Like with um. Uh, with like Weber grills and stuff like that, and that's the same setup I had. I got a I had a local warehouse that did all the did all yep. the um repackaging and sending it over to Amazon. So I, I love it. So yep. okay, so that's that won't be too difficult either. So all right, yeah. I just got to find something that works um, on that side. I'm trying to see okay, what were my other questions. I, I think I asked most of them. Yeah, I about to say that you're coming up on time, man. I, yeah. I don't. I don't I'm not a clock watcher, but you know I got a life. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I get it, man. It's I got, I got, I got to up my uh, my last video module for DLA Mastery, um, my course. Okay, and yeah, outside of that, man, I see you got your packaging. You're doing all that. Yep. Yeah, I think we've answered most of the questions. Um, yep. Yeah, I don't see any other questions that we haven't covered already. 
yeah, we, yeah. We, yeah, we talked about pretty much all of this now. And so I think I'm good, man. Like, like a lot of this stuff I, I had um, suspected. Yeah, and that's a lot of, even like me, you just need reassurance sometime, man. Yeah, yeah, I was just, like, especially just to see the numbers now. I'm like, okay, you know, I mean, I don't know your deal's number or whatever, but just when you showed me your Amazon account, I'm like, okay, yeah, he, this man's a real deal. And that's what, yeah. that's what I like, because I don't like, again, like you said, talking to some of these other folks, I'm just like, I don't really know if I trust you or. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, like, like, like in Dibs, um, like Pirate got, they, they got us at like 98,000. We were over that. I don't, I don't know how long it takes to fully update. I think they update once a month. Cause I actually, I don't know if I, I don't know if you know this. I work for a government contractor as well, but we on the software. Things. Okay. So, so you look at being like FPDS, right? So if I go to FPDS, I, I think that takes a while to update too. And that, but that's why I tell you, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just in the six figures. I'm not in seven figures yet, but I'm going to be this year. So mm -hmm. I type in my company and we have, 72 DLA and two with NASA. NASA really one because one is a NAS, uh, modification, mm -hmm. you know. But then you get the time check, you know. You know, and it adds up. You know, the largest purchase order we got individually from Dibs is 43,000. NASA was like another 24, 25,000. So you look at that, you know. And then you got. Uh, what were those purchase orders for? Like 40 some thousand bucks? That's for uh, some, a Dell product. Yep. Okay. So yep. Yep, and then uh, let me see something, you know, but we just, yeah, you can just go through it and, you know, we add it up. Uh, you know, we got, like I said, I've got stuff as low as, look at that, $34, you know? I don't even see my 43000 I don't know if you see my 43000 Did I see my 43000 purchase order in there? Uh, and then, you know, we got some IDIQ that they're still actively purchasing against, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why I tell people, all you got to do is bid. That's why I say, we, even, even me right now, I got to get my bid frequency up. The companies that's really winning... They're, they're getting their bids up. Like I, like I call it, like, getting their shots up in the gym, you know? Okay. And so, and again, from my standpoint, I could just hire some, um, get some of my old, older contractors for uh, from the yeah. Philippines to do the, the simple stuff. Yes. So they can go into dibs and they can go in there. Yeah, our, 43, our 43 KPO ain't even in here yet. So we got more than this. But like I said, so they're showing us 74 of our contracts in here. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, we just started using high gov, So we, you, know what that, you know what that means. Yeah, yeah. Higher gov. Go uh, if you if you bring up higher gov. This is one thing I want to show you. And yeah, I'll exactly. ask you about this real quick. But I, I have a. Go ahead. So if you go down to, do you have any queries set up already? Let me. I got. I think I remember putting some of my. Uh, let me go to. Uh, I forgot where I did it at. I did it, and I can't remember why I did it. Why I put in? Because I get the emails every day. Okay, just go down to where it says at the bottom on the tool save searches. Yeah, let me see save searches. Yeah. Okay, you, don't have any, you don't have any in there right I, now. I, I, I did one. I'm glad you told me that. Well, I'm going to do it right now. Okay, so what I typically do, like you see where at the top where it says um, at the very top. Yours looks slightly different, but um, just do like go to search all and then just put like your cage code in or anybody's cage code. Yep, put my cage code. No, I guess I'm sorry. The, you see where it's, the Lex 9 up where it says search by name or ID? uh yeah, yeah right. Yeah, right like put in like a granger cage code or something okay all right now click that and then click on um like nsn's 100k yep and then what i typically do um is i try to find the ones that are the, the, the ones that are the most um that sell the most yep you just let me see actually you're scrolling down the screen Click on that explore. Where it's uh, right here. Yeah, click on that one, and it should give you a popularity. Yeah. So then, then I just click on it in, and it's a, a, a group by most popular. It's already showing right there. Then I yep. click on NSN, and then I try to see exactly um, if there are any dibs. And yeah, if you scroll all the way down, you'll see you'll see like the dibs uh, contract yeah. for that NSA. Yeah. So, so what I was trying to figure out is, and I think you already answered my question. It's not the right. ones that are showing right here. That yep. this, this means that they never, these never, these solicitations never got um. Yep. Expired opens. Yep. Expired opens. So that means that they 
how far back can I go back and still bid on these then? So if they're expired opens, can I still bid them? If let's let me tell you something. That's why you got to come now. For, and even for high gov, I don't even use high gov for dibs because I know how dibs work, right? Mm -hmm. So I use dibs for dibs. So that's why I tell everybody use dibs for dibs and learn your cage codes of, of, of whoever you can get. Because look, I'm going to do issue. I'm going to issue by oldest. This is the oldest Granger one right here for 2019. These are some of the ones you're looking at, these gaskets. Let me see, 16, 16. Let's see. 16, 16, right? Mm -hmm. Look at that. It's sitting. It's the oldest one in here. I would bid that bad boy. Now let, let me let me go to Granger. I guarantee. You, let me see if I can. I just Google search it in Granger. Let's see if Granger has it. And, and let me see. And some of the stuff Granger may not have if they don't make anymore. But I'm gonna go to Granger. So they might have discontinued that product. Let's go to Zorro. Yeah, so they probably they probably discontinued that one. Okay. But 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 like I tell you, if it's showing in dibs, you can bid it. Gotcha. All right. So that, that's that's confirmation then. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you call it. That's that's quiet as kept. Most of my wins are expired opens. And that's where I was looking at. I was like, okay, I need to start bidding on expired open ones. Um, because I didn't see anything that's happening with them. Yeah, yeah. Cause that's that that's when I say low-hanging fruit. That's what I'm talking about. They're not buying a lot and they're expired for a long time and no one bid them. So what that tells me, and a lot of times, yeah, you're going to see little onesies, twosies where they only want to buy 10, 20, less than 10, less than 20. Mm -hmm. But if I tell people, Jeff Bezos is one of the richest men in the world from Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. Have you, because I haven't, have you ever been on Amazon and spent over $10,000? No. Me either. My motto is micro purchases make major money. So I tell people, fast nickel will be a slow dime. So you got to learn how to sell. see lose the lose the the the, the fantasy mind where it's like, oh, I got to get a ah hundred million. You know, you got people in there. Oh, I did a hundred million contract, but they ain't tell you they spent ninety nine million, ninety nine nine hundred ninety nine. Yeah. If I can sell these scale these sales and and sell them in volume in volume. I, I'll make more money over time. And I built, and the thing about it is past performance is past performance. Now I'm a competent federal contractor, you know, yeah. with a perfect spur score. Because it don't matter. When they look, when I, when a contract officer look me up in the, in the system, they see me as, they see me as, oh, he, he can deliver. Everything we give, he deliver. Mm -hmm. They don't, even, and, 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 and they don't, and they don't always go look at the, what, what you delivered. They just look at you and deliver. So, yeah, that's why I tell people, I feel like low hanging fruit, is th that's their way of like throwing crumbs out there to see who wants to really go get them. Because I'm like, why would the government only need two of these or one of these? You know, a lot of times, you know, and I'm like, okay, and I'm going to go pick those crumbs up and fill my bread basket up. And then you know, some of those crumbs, they turn into full meals because they come back to me and buy them both. Or it gives me, it teaches me, okay, because you are naturally progress in anything you do. More repetition. Yeah. So now I know, okay, I've been buying from Granger, but buying from MasterCard, but buying from Zorro. Let me look up companies similar to, you know, let me look up all the distributors by industries. So I tell people to find your niche. You got to find your niche eventually. So what is your industry, right? You know, whether it's food service, whether it's automotive, whether it's, you know, janitorial, whether it's office supply, whatever. You find that, you find products, you find distributors in that, and then you start getting those cage code lists because the government buys damn near every large or brand in America. You think of it, you've been in the military, you you know yeah. you get a defect. You worked out in an MWR gym, or you, if you went if you did any deployments, you know you, you went to that MWR center overseas and you used to play the video game, watch the movie, use that spar with phone, yeah. uh, lift those weights, ate, ate that defect food, use those condiments, use those plastic sports, those plastic plates, everything they bought all of that. Someone sold that everything. Gotcha. So that's how you do it, and then once you get enough revenue. And you want to grow your business, you can do it the way I'm doing it right now. I'm focusing more on the Amazon e-commerce commercial side because I know it's a lot of money in volume. And then now I'm getting into the tech docs where now it's my private label time where now my company has enough ring in the name that I can start making my own products, get the government to buy them. And then if, it's, if I can commercialize it, then I commercialize it and put it on Amazon or put it in Walmart because I might because now since I'm selling to the government, 
If it's a good enough product, I might say, I don't got to hope people buy. I might go straight to Walmart on consignment and get that product in the store on the shelf. And then advertise it as a, dis- I, I don't like to leave with black. I leave with disabled veteran. Because, hmm. you know, if you say black, some people, you know, yeah. me, I, I love it. But the other people are like, oh, I don't like anything it's special. So I don't leave with that. You know, I tell you, because nobody else leaves when, when the Indian guy or the Chinese restaurant in, your, in, in the black neighborhood, they don't leave with a Chinese business. They get their money. So I want everybody money too, you know? Okay. Yeah, definitely, brother. All right. So when, when are you launching your class? Are you going to do a master? Uh, what's, what's the setup around this? So right now, we I got to do one more video. And then my developers building the website. Um, and then we're going to launch it. I'm going to, I'm going to start it. YouTube channel and start. I'm gonna start Instagram Shorts while, where that's why I was asking everybody who I work with if I have permission to use some of our session. Yeah. What I do, I take. I don't use our whole session. I won't. I don't put proprietary stuff, but I'll use reels of some of the highlights of our session, and I'm gonna put that on us on us to to, to 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 advertise the class to show social proof. So what I do, my strategy is three strategies. I don't mind telling you guys this is, a, one on one sessions to show me and interact with you. B me uh lifestyle me traveling uh me uh going around and then see me showing the work so showing some of the purchase orders or showing some of my amazon screenshot sales for the day you know things like that that way people know i'm actually doing the work people know people are actually working with me and then people see i'm actually being rewarded for the fruits of my labor and that way i get people to come to me and i'm showing y'all what i'm really doing um and you know and, and you know if, we, if you know if you book it and then so dla mastery should be finished by the end of this month that's going to be my course. I tell people I, I give us packets. So if you, you know, right now, since the course hasn't been launched or the website isn't ready, I'm giving a discount rate. Once the website and the course is, my rate for anybody who hasn't, your grandfather in at 250 an hour. Anybody that comes in after, once everything's launched, it's 500 an hour. The reason why is because I am not a consultant first. I will give this up tomorrow if, if it ever interferes with 305 or supplies. I'm just going to be honest with you. Yeah. That's what I built from the ground up. That was my legacy. And that's what's more important to me. You know, me trying to sell courses as a consultant, no. But I don't mind teaching people who really want to do the work, how to do the work. Because the government drops an average of 10,000 person orders on dibs every day, and more than 60% don't get the um, fulfilled. Okay. I can't make all the money if I wanted to be greedy. I couldn't. You know, I sell Dell products and Samsung products. You can go to any mall in America, or any Best Buy, or any Target, or any Walmart and buy them, but people still buying from me. So that's why I don't have a scarcity mindset in this business. If you know how to sell, you know how to sell. Right. You know, um, so that's that's so, so yeah, the course will be done. Um, I have a I have a team, marketing team. We're gonna, we're gonna, you know, we're not gonna overly market because it's not so we'll just, you know, I'll advertise on Instagram, you know, yeah. word of mouth. I take referrals. We may eventually as it, as it gets bigger, affiliate lake. Like I said, anybody that's you know, your grandfather, 250 an hour, you buy four sessions with me, you get the course free. Okay. And that that's just how I do it. Two fifty an hour, uh, four four sessions, thousand dollars. Now, once we get up, you know, it's gonna be four sessions for two thousand. But then you'll get the course. We're probably gonna drop the course at thousand nine ninety nine. Mm-hmm. It depends on how good it does. If it sells well, you know, we may cap it at. I told her I don't want to go over nineteen ninety nine. You know, if you look at some of these other people, they they're trying four to ten thousand. Yeah, I saw that mess. And ain't nobody even winning. Because you know why? Most people that come to me, they've worked with. Fox Wade, they've worked with Ham just a breed. They've worked with uh the middleman guy who's been on earning leads with Jason White, you know. And he's not legit. Well, I, it's not that he's not legit. People win, but I don't know if it's the people that didn't, if they're not doing what he teaches. I don't know what he teaches, right? Okay. But people that people that uh worked with him that came to me was like, man, I I didn't win nothing doing that way. But like I tell you, he's teaching you the middle man strategy. Middle man, yeah. So I don't know what's your background, James. I was avionics. I was a welder in high school. I'm not a damn plumber. I'm not a carpenter. I'm not a painter. So if I go take a Jason White class and then I run and everybody always runs and do janitorial. Janitorial is the most competitive contracting out there and it's the lowest margin. You do not make money. So if you think you're going to middleman janitorial, you're, you're, fool. you're, you're fooling yourself. You're not going to win. You're going to be too high. Me, I know how to do the right middleman strategy. I know how. If, if anybody who's service based want to come to me, I'll teach them how to do it. But it's not. It's, it don't. It's not. It does not call you calling other companies to do work that your company's supposed to do. That's not how it works. I teach you. Of, you work for a large prime, right? Yeah. So I've worked for. I still actually work for a large prime because I'm not going to leave my job until my business um, 
interferes with it, and then I leave my job. But if if you know if you work for any large prime overseas, you know how they do it. They do what they call letter of intent. That's the, that's the real way they do the middleman strategy, where you kind of reach out to prospective, um, you reach out to candidates, promise them a job if you get the contract, get their resume, you submit their resume as the past performance, and then you bid it like that. Yep, yep, yep. That's exactly what they do to us. But uh, and we yep. do a software side of things, so we we're doing like weapons effects simulations, like all this stuff that's going on overseas. Like we, we we're developing the software. Yep. Uh, to help with that, but yeah, it's actually, I'm, yeah, and also um, another service that I'm getting ready to offer with my packaging company is going to be I'm going to sell it. We are getting ready to start offering mil spec packaging, so we're going to be doing mil spec mil standard packaging as well as the VSM. So pretty much, it'll be limited. We, we're not going to probably do the hazmat stuff yet, but any of the others, you know, dry goods, commercial off the shelf, even some of the stuff that's you know we're not going to be packaging tanks and stuff. But we got a big enough warehouse that if anybody wants to sub out their packaging, we're going to. That's going to be coming up too. We're going to be offering that, and then I'm um, I'm actually developing a software for mil spec packaging. Nice. Okay. So, so I do software development <laughs> too. So, right. well, James, man, I appreciate your time. Uh, oh, thank you right. for you know supporting the business, and I hope you gain value. I did. I did. Like I said, most of the stuff, a lot of the stuff I knew, but just I just needed to talk to you and kind of like you know there was some stuff rough around the edges. Again, I go back and like whenever you send me the recording, I check it out. Because I yeah. thought there was some stuff that we were running through, but you know, I, I think I think we're good. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna send you this once. So usually once I close the call, um, since I do Google Meet, mm-hmm. they have process it, send it to me, put it in the drive, and then I'll I'll create a folder for you in the in the consultant client's drive, and I'll give you uh, access to that folder link, that link. That way it's not sending you this large file. And you can just go in there and just look at your video. Okay. Um, anytime you want as a viewer, and you can anything you want to do with it. And like I said, if you ever want to do another session, you know how to reach out to me or if you got any referrals that's looking again to GovCon, mm-hmm. it's stay away from the people. Like I always tell people, I only refer two other consultants if you're doing products like this. Dave Cantave and Michelle Brown. I watch I, I watch If you want to work with me, work with me. Now, right now, I'm charging less than them. But if you want to work with, the, you know, more known, you know, reach out to them too. But ain't the nigga teacher I can teach you because I, I know it too. Even when I work with Dave, they was like, man, you damn no more than me. I was like, yeah, but I, I said, but I, you, but you, I said, I respect that you showed your cage code. So you're a very young man. I said, that's why I knew you was the truth. And then I said, two, your company was bigger than my company and I wanted to scale. You know, mm-hmm. that's what I, and that's what y'all taught me how to scale it. You know, and that's, that's why I worked with them. But, um, has yeah, Michelle shown her cage code? I, I don't, I don't know if I even look. No, at no, I, I know her cage code. I don't give it, um, you know, but she hasn't shown her cage code. But, but one thing I can tell you about Michelle is I worked with Michelle. I bought Michelle cars and look where I'm at. Okay, so a lot of the stuff that you even just showed me was basically from what you learned from Michelle. So yeah, she gave me my foundation. Some of the stuff I learned, and I taught her too. But mm-hmm. a lot of my foundation with dibs and me getting into dibs comes from Michelle. If if I didn't find Michelle, I wouldn't know what dibs was. You know, mm-hmm. so I give credit with credit due. And she taught me about dibs, and she taught me how to navigate it, and, and my entry point into government contracting. Okay. I found Eric Coffee before her, and the first the first consultant I ever contacted was Eric Coffee. But he was more service based. He wasn't doing products, and I was like, "No, that's not what I want to do." Mm-hmm. And after Eric, I went to Michelle, and Michelle took me by her wing. So okay, yeah, and I, I found Kiwi first. Yeah. Then I then I found Michelle, and then I found um, somebody else, and then you. Um, yeah. And I like Kiwi. The only issue is like that um, SIR Global thing was like, oh shoot, how much is that thing? Uh, two to three thousand dollars, and I'm like, yeah, I ain't trying to get that. <laughs> yeah, I don't need that. And then I find higher gov, and I'm like, wait a minute, this that's is, the same thing. It's the same thing, and it's, it's even be better. Reselling, you might even be reselling higher gov. <laughs> no, it's like no higher, higher gov is better. And yep. uh, just quick pro tip, real quick before you go, you can keep renewing your trial. Like this is like the third trial that I'm on. Oh wow! And yeah, so you ain't gotta necessarily buy it off the back. So I'm just like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna ride this thing out until I can. And then if they make me buy it, I buy it. I buy it. I'll buy it. That's five hundred years worth. It. Like I said, I, I, they actually just gave us a contract. Um, we wouldn't have found it, but we found it with NASA. Before I go, we bet it, and we probably gonna win that. And it was because of high government. I said, if I win it, I'm now I'm now since you told me I'm gonna keep renewing, but at the end I'm gonna I'm gonna buy it because it, it paid for itself. If we win that NASA contract. Yeah. So that's what okay. it is. Well, James, man, yeah. nice talking to you, brother. I'll see you that recording when it when it populates. Mm-hmm. And um, just you know how to find me if you want to reach out. And once we once we get DLA Mastery up and running. I'll definitely everybody that I work with. I'll definitely send y'all a um, email and let y'all know it's up and running if it's something you want to purchase. Okay, cool, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir, man. Enjoy your weekend. All right, you too. All right.